Hi everyone, this is Alec from Reddit's Hex Encounter community. Today I am joined by a community member and uh, active Twitter wargamer, Irish Shylock. Irish, how are you today? Good, Alec. Thanks for having me on. I uh, love having you here. So today we're going to be playing uh, Blue Water Navy, which is a recent release from Compass Games. Um, and uh, we, we've been uh, both sharing Twitter logs on this game here recently, playing through the, the lead-up scenarios, scenarios one through five. I like to think of these scenarios as, as instructional in, in two regards. First, they're kind of programmed rules learning. They, they really do focus down into vignettes that focus the action either on surface subsurface or air they, they really do a pretty good job of that um, but then they also help sh show you vignettes of things that are hard to do and we're going to be doing one of those today so today we're going to be playing scenario four which is the strike against the Kola peninsula and so here the idea is is i will be playing nato um, and trying to bring uh, freedom to the Kola Peninsula. And we'll have four carriers to do so that I will form up into a handful of task forces. Uh, and so this is going to be hard because this is kind of the backyard of the Soviets. And so I, I really don't have much to do here aside from just plow my way in, do a little bit of preparation um, to make it a little bit safer for me to push in there. But I don't have a lot of time to uh, to wait before I've got to start doing strikes. What's going to be, uh, what, what are you thinking here for organizing your defenses, uh, uh, Irish? Yeah, I think you said pretty much all the pressure is on you to bring your forces to there. You obviously have to get to those um, airfields and the course, obviously, to rack up damage, I think, to do heavy damage on both, can we? Heavy damage on both, right. And so looking here real quick at the map, that's four damage on the ports and four damage on the airfields. Yeah, so I think I think from the Soviet perspective, it's a piece of what there's many roadblocks in your way, and then obviously opportunistic strikes or chances to get as often as all right, so everyone, for the sequence of play, uh, we're we're through, you know, the setup, uh, and and uh, the Soviet player really doesn't have a lot of any choices here on setup. The uh, the subs go where they go. Everything is in the air bases or in port in the facilities, and the roar stats are where they are. And those will give some, um, you know, uh, lower chance detection hits, but they're kind of free detection hits and combined with moves that the Soviets will get. And those are parked um, north of the Sosis line. Um, I have some decisions as to where my task forces are formed and in what concentrations. Uh, I can form up to four task forces with the four carriers, and I have five subs to sprinkle around east and north. So to show everyone what I've done, I've, I've parked uh, three of my subs, uh, two of them in north 7-8 and one in north 5-6. Uh, I have formed my strike groups into two task forces. Task Force Hammer, north of Iceland, comprises uh, Enterprise and Saratoga. Um, and uh, their escorts, and there should be a submarine, unless I lost it. Um, I may have misplaced the submarine. I'll have to go find that one. Um, and uh, the Task Force Mustang is the America and the Nimitz and, and their escorts. Uh, th those are in East 6. And, and this is uh, kind of a, 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 a tough needle to thread here because I need to have enough... Uh, organization amongst my carrier strike groups that I can marshal a nice concentration of air power. However, anytime I say nice concentration and naval, that is just looking to soak up backfire missiles. So we'll we'll see how this plays out. When I when I did my last play of this um, on a, a Twitter log, um, my my problem was not being able to have a potent enough air package, and I really did seem to misplace. Ah, oh, there you are. <laughs> I know I misplaced the submarine. Badger missile. So. Say again. So. Yeah, there he is. That's right. I just left them uh, down there further south. Okay, so I'll clear the movement trails. Okay, so we're through those th that setup and those decision pieces. Uh, we're now on to the op track, uh, and uh, there we go. And so um, this is a rather large air quote of the small scenarios, with each side having 10 op uh, in each movement. And, and as is usual, it's the Soviets uh, to play or pass. Um, you're only allowed to pass in this game when you have fewer operation points than your opponent, and so um, Irish will not be able to pass, and he'll need to take some action, be it attacking with a submarine, putting them on patrol, setting up air, uh, air patrols, organizing a task force. He's got a couple things. Sending some bears out to look for the task forces. 
got he has a couple things to choose from. Okay, so for first action, I will walk task force. It would cost me uh, two ops. And I have eight. Uh, grab a task force. Call this task force Gorshkov. Should I move these units off into my USS, my Soviet task force box? I don't want to leave them as is. Your call. Um, you know, Vassal keeps counter clutter virtually down, so it's easy enough to keep them under the task force label if you so choose. You're welcome to have the yeah, abstraction, uh, and so I don't see the massive stack, whatever you'd like. Okay, so I'm going to keep them on my. I'll keep them on that board off the, the main board itself, just for clutter. So that stays, um, that doesn't go to C as of yet, correct? Uh, so uh, which task force where? I'm looking and I don't see a task force marker. It should Sorry. be formed up in port. Yeah. In Cola, is here. Oh, sorry, I think I have lost you. Oh. oh, I, uh, there we go. Yeah, it looks like you disconnected. Uh, feel free to yeah. refresh the game state. Uh, while he's reconnecting, anyone that's live in the stream, Bravo, if you wanted to hop in on Vassal and you can poke uh, poke your head around the ma the board independent of us if you'd like. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop that. Just uh, quickly. So again, just to summarize, I'm setting up a task force in court. I'm seeing the uh call outs that things are moving around but I'm not seeing where they're going. Yep, should see that uh, Oh yeah, I got that. One. Yep, yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that's me done. Oh, I just realized we did for all the weather good. Oh, hey, no, good call. Let me run around and do that. You know, we had all this time to set up. Okay. Uh rolling. I think we just need to do north and east. Uh we're checking weather in north. Four is clear, good weather in north and east. We'll look uh, and seven. We got uh, a little bit of rough weather in uh, east six, which is where Task Force Mustang is. That's interesting. <laughs> I'll drop a weather counter there. It affects the Task Force at start though. Uh, no, it won't at start, but when I go to do my first move, they will have to um, settle for a move marker. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for your 2 OP, you formed uh, Task Force uh, uh, Gorshkov in the Kola port. Yeah. Okay, that then leaves me... Uh, go ahead. I have those units then in the Task Force box on. Obviously, you can't see it up close. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Off, off map. Okay, good. Yeah. 
So uh, for me, um, what that'll leave is I've got two op now effectively to do as I choose. Let me pull up the uh, ops track. So, and there will be a movement at, uh, um, following my second op. Okay. So for my first op, I am going to, all right, you don't know where any of my guys are yet. So I'll take that to my advantage. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of screening ahead of my task force movement. And I'm going to send uh, some of the Nimrod, one of the Nimrods from the UK to do some anti-sub ops in North 78. Okay. And so uh, we will, that's uh, two C zones away uh, and they have uh, a three as their ASW value looking at the blue play aid on the submarine side. Um, there shouldn't be anything that affect the number of dice. We're not in the Arctic, the weather's fine. Hydrophones aren't in play. So I'll get three dice um, and w then we'll see where these can be assigned to. Okay, well, that was a lot of that. <laughs> Two, three, and four rolled. So good, good job. That was that was my green crew. Uh, okay, so uh, that's the end of that one. Uh, I'll take my second one here and fully resolve uh, a an op, and then we'll trigger the event. Um, and so for this one, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to see if I can't make it a little bit harder for you to get bears out. This is probably a little bit early for me to do this. But I'm going to take some F4s and I'm going to push them, have them overfly the Norwegian Sea one and then set them up and patrol in the Barents. So we're kind of doing a, a kind of an extended cap here looking for bears. All right, and then that triggers now that we resolved uh, nine, that triggers a fast event. Um, so these events that trigger here for those of you watching um, will either do um, a fast, uh, what's under there, repair, repairing damage, uh, all ships or, or all ships. So for fast, we're looking at task forces that are not slow. Uh, nothing is explicitly designated as fast, but if you have a, a naval unit, a group of units that are not otherwise marked as slow, they are fast and they will get movement triggered on fast. So they may move one C zone, ignoring on day two. This is a May effect and there's no day two here on the short scenarios. Um, I'm going to take the movement here now movement and weather is problematic um, so what we'll do there is they get a movement marker um, there we go place weather moved so um task force I think was it priorities to the subjects of course Oh yes, of course you do get um, the first there um, as usual. Uh, Soviets first, and then and then NATO. So go ahead and uh, whatever sure. you like to do with uh, Gorshkov. Yeah, I've only got one thing I can do, which is basically uh, more Yep. And for me, Mustang will um, work through the heavy sea state and not get very far. Hammer understanding uh, that its its partner task force is making slow headway uh, will stay where it is. So I think that uh, finishes all task forces, and you're up. So, what I'm thinking about here, Phantoms have three dice uh, plus one modifier. Like the she push out fox bats or fox hounds. I'm scared them off. If I have, if I had um, aircraft, if I if I did have a Things flying off an aircraft carrier in that task force. Can they join land based fighters intercepting? Um, so, carrier based air is always either in a cap role, defending 
the task force or in a strike role. They don't go on patrol outside of uh, the task force. Yeah. They don't finish up this action. Right. Okay, that's, uh, that's been one up. Um, track down to seven. Push out the box house and try to intercept those files. All right, and this will probably end up, you know, certainly being in your advantage with the one dice printed advantage and one tactical uh, advantage. So um, I think the way that this resolves is e each of us are technically uh, start off here on patrol but this just got established so i respond to you coming out there so I, I would need to dig into the rules real quick to figure out if you take the one die penalty i certainly take the one die penalty on this resolution for being on patrol um in the fighters versus fighters so oh, that's the wrong book so quickly referencing uh chapter 17 or 18 of the rule book here to um, check for resolution of fighter versus fighter that's right all right uh, actually i can i can bow out so if both sides have fighters in the same sea zone the soviet player must declare if you will avoid following by me if either does so they are returned spent um okay. take no further combat otherwise the opposing fighters will attack one another as follows okay um yeah and i would be intercepting you i would think here so i think that would actually be a two dice advantage on your part yeah that seems like a terrible idea i'm going to go ahead and uh bow out so yep so this is one of the very few ways those of you watching that an intercepting air unit can become spent they otherwise will happily sit there the entire time. All right. Well, advantage you for sure. For the moment. For the moment. For the moment. Okay. Uh, we'll go one more. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll take my op. Um, yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna give these Nimrods another shot here. Now this is a shorter range Nimrod, so he'll have to work on the Norwegian C. Uh, but we'll have him do his. So again, no, nothing that will affect the number of dice. He'll get his printed three dice uh, with no DRM. And that's a natural 10. I'll take that. Uh, is there a nine? No, it's a six. Okay. So looking now at how we resolve the, uh, the hit, um, I guess the question that I'm going to have to look up here real quick in 17 is now that we have a hit that's marked, who assigns it? Also, the 10. It's okay. It's like you will probably get that. Okay. Yep. If the attacking unit is a maritime patrol unit. Um, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. The defending player may allocate any one die that is not a nat 10, and the attacking guy gets to allocate everything else. Okay, so that would be me, uh, and this Foxtrot is far more capable against the task forces than, than the victor. So I'll go ahead and uh, take the step from the uh, Foxtrot. All right. Um, we trigger the you know, repair event, but there are no damaged facilities, so uh, play to you. Okay, so I think I start uh, once the forms with me to uh, cause some problems. So, what I will do is spend one up, brings me down to six, I will fly out a. Unified bear F. Mm. Bring three. 
to the Baron C. Go to North 7 8. Then go to 9 10. And go across the ocean. Okay, so the cap will respawn. Hopefully, I can chase away one of your detection dice. Um, so, fighter versus maritime. It is. Uh, dice minus two with one fresh fighter. Okay. So for me, the Tomcat has four dice. Minus two would put it at two dice at plus two. Concur? Right. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Ooh, okay. Um, so the five won't do me anything, but the nat ten on the plane will be a step loss and no search. Yes. Those Phoenix missiles have a pretty good range. You want to flip? Uh, sure. There we go. That's me scared off. Like, I can't do anything there. Well, and, and uh, he returns to base and says, I don't know if there are any ships, but there are fighters. <laughs> I didn't go back there again soon. <laughs> so, let's see. Drag the board spent air rather than actual marker itself. Oh, you can right click on them, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. All right, that dude goes all the way back to his airfield. All right. So op to me now. Um, I will take one op and do what I always you know when I, when I was playing solo. I felt like this too. Like I felt I was either one turn behind of one side or one turn ahead of the other. You know, like like based <laughs> on the track, uh, or, or uh, just uh, you know, like getting uh, a patrol out. You know, either I I always feel like it's like oh I got it through, got one through right before I I wanted I was ready. Uh, <laughs> All right, and so that's the one up for me, uh, and we now are in a second ship's move, and um, I will say, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Uh, I will delete the moved marker off of Task Force Mustang, and Task Force... Oh, yeah, 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 okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, I don't do, do, do. I want to move Task Force? My concern about moving the task, I could leave the task force there and the nice big roadblock there and see. My concern about bringing that task force out potentially is on your Los Angeles castles, north of Iceland and north of the UK. Well, no, sorry, I'll, I'll just I'll leave that. I'll, I'll leave the task force course trust for it. Okay. Yeah. Except one thing that I that I find is that you know. Um, T uh, submarines are if i can if you can locate a task force submarines can be effective but of course they, they are miserable at finding the ships so um okay so in that case um oh, I'll, I, 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 i'm potentially putting myself in range of your carrier aircrews as well yeah well you're the you're already in range or at least the task force is but oh yeah sorry yes because no no you're right you're right it's it's oh. Range, range one. So you're not in range yet, but if I move forward, you will be in range. Correct. All right. Um, real quickly, I'm flipping to the event uh, detail on, on resolving the move event because um, there will be a couple of um, detection opportunities given the roar stats and the organic uh, detection capabilities of the task forces. So I'll just follow the procedure then. For step one, you, you move the task forces. I'll push task force hammer... Uh, over the uh, Sosis line into North 78. I will remove the moved marker uh, from the bad weather move on Task Force Mustang. And they are also going to go uh, and scoot, hug the Icelandic coast, and also go into North 78. So again, bunching up here, um, this is bad in terms of 
Um, it really focuses the action. It's good in that when I generate strike packages, I have four air wings to pick from. Uh, but it certainly does focus your efforts down. Okay, so that was the movement. Um, I'm going to degrade existing detections. There are none. Roll task force detection with each Rorstat on the map, which shares a C-zone with one or more enemy task forces. So this will be Irish's uh, attempt here at task force detection with the Rorstat. Yeah. Oof. Oh, that's good for me, isn't it? Oh. Check it, I assume the plan would be good for me, I think it's not. Per the play aid, a roll of 9 to 10 is normally good detection placed by the rolling player. Change result to a 6 in bad weather. For a roar stat, change it to a 1. <laughs> So, um, that looks like no effect. Uh, yeah. Where's, where are you seeing that? Are you seeing on the fair chart? Is that on the... Yeah, the blue play aid um, yeah. in resolution. Oh, sorry. Oh, God, yeah. Change to. Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, so the, the satellite was in the wrong part of its orbit at the beginning of this uh, segment and just was not helpful. Okay, just so... Just missed the <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so now we get fighter versus fighter combat. Should uh, it be relevant? So uh, let's say that um, you had uh, MiGs over north 7-8. There is now my cap in the same area as the MiGs, but we don't have to worry about that. Um, resolve interception and cap response to intrinsic detection units, uh, your interceptors versus my um, uh, S3 Vikings or whatever they are, um, don't, doesn't apply. Remove spent from all non-MP air units, uh, so I think I get my phantoms fresh. Okay. Okay, and that's that. That is the ship's move segment. Which brings the op to you. Right, right so they've got a lot of hardware north of Iceland. Which I'd love to uh, get into good detection mode, which has also got those uh, four phantoms. Bravo is bringing up that uh, he believes, based on a careful read of page 27 of the rule book, that the roar stat is only degraded on a 9 in bad weather, which may affect what you want to do with this op. So let's take a quick look on, on that real quick. Um, I said the play a good detection place by one player changed results. Yep. It's a roar stat changed to one. Oh, in bad weather. Yep, okay. So that's the one where the, the played was a little bit less, uh, had a word removed that uh, um, made us misfire. Okay, there it is. So that is actually a straight up good detection on a task force of your choice. Uh, okay. It's a bit that your stacks are visible to you, but I'm purposely not hovering over them because I don't do the. Uh be blind, so to speak, just for game purposes. Yeah, and why... Yeah, go with that one. Go ahead, sorry. No, I was going to say, yeah, and, and so for the folks watching, you know, the little bit of fog of war here is, is uh, you know, what should only be on the map is the TF Hammer token, the TF Mustang token, and he doesn't know if that's little or big or what it is. 
Um, now that being said, on you know those are those holding boxes are printed on the actual map, so you have to have these you know kind of gentleman type agreements here. So, which one would you like to know where it is? Uh, I'll go with the that north, the most northern task force. Okay. Place that detection marker and flip it to you know everything about its side. Excellent. Get to see this. Okay, so we now know that Saratoga is there with its trader air group, the F 14s. Um, company fly US 1, 2, 3. Enterprise as well, its trader air group, F 14s, and company fly a Sturgeon. Okay, so that gives you a, a lot of info uh, to work with here to decide what you want to do. Um, I am in range of the, let's see here, I'm, I'm looking at your uh, backfires. Yeah, your backfires at heavy loadout. Uh, I'm only two away from you actually, so you've got heavy yeah. loadouts on badgers and backfires. Yes. Like, I'm wondering so, if you do a four op play right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm just, I'm, I'm definitely sending. <laughs> I'm definitely sending something. That's how many I'm sending. I need to. Let's see. Uh, those guys will be collected again in the next ship's action, which is, what, three, three rounds away, effectively? Uh, the next ship's action. It all depends on you know how much yeah, carrier how much play you and I yeah. have. True. Uh, I'm gonna roll with. Um... I'm gonna roll with three D twenty two backfires to try and hit that task force. So that has a range of, as you said, a full loadout with a range of three. Okay, so the first thing that happens there is the potential interception by the Phantoms from uh, Scotland, right? Um, and so if they get a bite at the apple, were you escorting those? Do you have anything that could escort that far? I don't think you do. No, I, no, I think the furthest, uh, my big 31s, and big 25s, I think are my longest range, so they can get it. Uh, they can't go to the barracks. All right. So now, so, escort. Okay, so I'll resolve the fighters versus strike aircraft intercept um, uh, here, which um, my fighters uh, nominally have three dice at plus one. They are on patrol, so they'll take a die away, so there'll be two dice. Um, and that is the only set of DRMs for the phantom interceptors from Scotland. So two dice at plus one. Oh, <laughs> rolling. Oh, they don't even detect it. They're just like way off cycle. Uh, their their airborne C two wasn't in place. They they're asleep at the wheel. All right, so yeah. So now the cap gets to take a crack at this. Um, and depending on what I roll, um, it may or be before or after missiles are launched, right? So, um, roll, revisiting the fighter versus strike aircraft tables, um, this is going to be, um, I believe, we can look in the rules real quick, I believe that I can have up to three cap units, given that you have three rating aircraft. Yeah. That's the way I understand it as well, yeah. Yep, so the Tomcats from the Saratoga and from the Enterprise will each sortie to meet this. Um, so they each carry four dice at plus two. Um, they uh, are not on patrol. They are not spent. You're, you are not detected, so I don't get any further uh, benefit, and the carrier is undamaged. So this is going to be eight dice at plus two. <laughs> yes. So, okay. Good luck. <laughs> 
All right, so um, the backfires have a defense value of 10. So really, unless I have an eight, nine, or 10, nothing is happening here. So looking at my results, I have a pair of eights and a 10, which would be three steps. The nat 10 causes the step launch before launch. The other two cause step lo losses after launch. Correct. So I'll go ahead and cause the one step loss before launch here. Um, which uh, what we can do is we can resolve the missile uh, procedure, which I, I really do love. Uh, and then we'll um, figure out how we're assigning the rest of these. Um... Oh, actually, no, you get to save. All kills by cap must be saved based on... Uh, oh, the... yes. Yeah, you know exactly where they're coming from here, right? And so conceivably... Yeah, you're... Yep, yeah, you're... Not only because it's included protection of Exactly. It's a, it's a carrier in good detection. You are sea skimming. You're coming on the right approaches. You're following your doctrine precisely, and you're not having to look around for me or do launch on bearing. So, um, yeah. So why don't you go ahead and uh, give three dice? The first one will be against the Nat Ten. Okay. Take a lot of time. Oof. Sorry. There's one. Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Congratulations. So, um, so these saves, I, you know, I love the, the abstraction in the system. To me, these saves here really reflect the fact that the target is fixed and, and that the raid planners kind of know this and know where the threat is and are able to do this. These, these interceptors uh, are much more dynamic when you're doing them in the sea zones, but, but when you're doing it over the target, uh, there's not a lot of uh, air room of maneuver. So, uh, okay, so the NAT-10 is the only thing that resolves here, which, which we, we have. And now we'll do the missile resolution procedure. Um, how many missiles we got? Uh, we got 15. <laughs> okay, uh, so 15 missiles. This dream might end soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, one second here. I think that, um, just checking real quick, uh, the uh, F-14s against a... Um, oh, yeah, they yeah, they. Off. Right, they do missile shoot down. So I just got to check here. Here we go. Nat one to two with the F fourteen rolling kills those missiles. So let me look back at my previous rolls. I only had one nat two. Darn it. No two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was it was the you know four rolls prior to your rolls. So there, there's a single nat two. So you got fifteen missiles off. Let me come over here. We'll we'll start tracking missiles. Um. What are these black missiles? Yeah, great. So 15 missiles. Um, the uh, the Phoenix missiles uh, shoot down two of the incoming, which leave 13 missiles for the escorts to screen against. Looking now in the blue play aid for missiles attacks against task forces, your 13 missiles allow me to launch up to 16 SAM. Uh, attempts. Uh, it all depends on how much SAM I have total. I am seeing 14 oh, SAM it. available in that in that task force. It will definitely get through at least. Oh yeah, there's going to be some leakers. Okay, so so there's there's a salvo here of um, 13 missiles coming in. I get 14 rolls. Um, looking at the DRMs here. You don't have your exquisite missiles like the ballistics that are going to cause me real problems. These aren't NATO missiles. The weather is fine. Um, so there's no DRM here. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and I've got 14 rolls at no DRM. So we'll kind of do these. You know, let, me, let me come back over here and we'll start marking these down. So uh, the first three. Um, uh, anything higher than a three works. Anything higher than a nine is two. So that's five. No, that's four missiles down. Uh, yep. Okay, that's my first three. My next three is one, two, three. Another four missiles down. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, six uh, SAM attempts. Next three. Ooh, uh, another four missiles down. Twelve, uh, and and I've only rolled nine so far, so now I'm up to twelve, and then there's the there's the rest of them. I rolled a lot of high rolls there. Crazy. 
All right, so you can just imagine Sea Whiz, you know, shooting lead everywhere, right? Those Gatling guns with little R2-D2 sitting on them and Sea Sparrows flying out. And, you know, there were a lot of missiles coming in this raid, but there were also a lot of escorts here, um, you know, all being all being coordinated. So... Um, a lot of missiles flying. Yeah. Both yeah, this, this, this would have been uh, pretty exciting. So in this case... Um, uh, the, you you didn't saturate the the defenses of the task force, right? Like there, everything kind of worked the way it was supposed to, as far as the layered defenses between uh, the the carrier strike group aircraft being far out there trying to disrupt the launch baskets, and then then the missiles flying in and you know being attrited as they come into the task force. And at the end of the day, uh, there was no effect. All right, well, that was scary. <laughs> I was. I, I actually probably couldn't have got a better. I could have wished that after 30 minutes, Ward's target would have not seen those guys up to watch it now. I find the, the curve here on missile defenses to kind of have a really sharp knee in it uh, in this game. You know, uh, rarely do I find I have scenarios um, in large uh, combatants like this where it's one or two hits, right? It's either nothing <laughs> or you swamp it. Or everything you see, you see the carrier. Right, yeah, exactly. All right, so in this case, um, you know, it was it was a lot of op that got spent there. Uh, honestly, not a lot of else got spent, right? You only lost one step on your strike aircraft. I did, yeah, and they will recover. It did cost quite a bit of ops, but it's kind of, I had to really take that opportunity. I don't want to have to go to detection on that task force. Yeah, and that's not going to last forever. No. All right, so, which moves it back, uh, let's see here. All right, which moves it back to me, and I gotta figure out what I'm doing here. My, my first thought is, you know, do I have sufficient defensive posture, right? Like, do, do I have my subs helping screen? You know, first of all, we've got a good detected task force here. Your, your Foxtrot and Alpha, could equally wreck my day. Now, you're not going to be able to coordinate your subs very well because these aren't missile subs, right? These aren't SSGNs. Um, but still, one of the, like this Fox truck could really, you know, ruin my day. Although I do have a fair amount of uh, ASW <laughs> here as well. So, um, so my first question is, um, do I want to go sub hunting with my Los Angeles versus there versus your other guys? How much am I worried about the sub threat? And then if I'm going to, I'm trying to balance that choice versus taking a bite at the apple here, right? You know, just going ahead and throwing uh, a pretty big package against you. Um, and and I'm, I'm considering doing it. What's your thought? So you've got two things to consider there, I suppose. One obviously is showing that large package at the ports and airfields, obviously things you have to go through the burn sea, get through the box tenants and then get through the land base cap, I suppose. But you'll have to do that either way, no matter what you do. That's right. Now the benefit is this is also self-preservation here, where if I am able to damage and disrupt uh, the airfields, that is that keeps them from striking. Yeah, and that sounds like a really good idea to me right now. <laughs> you don't want to see those backfires again, huh? No. So, so looking here on the general play aid on action and turn sequence, I'm looking at my air units. And uh, one plus strike units flying airstrike, fighters and tankers fly for free, um, and fighters may escort part of the way. So I can drag with me X number of, of uh, F-14s to kind of um, escort the package. Um, and and uh, I only have to pay for the carrier air groups uh, when I do this. So... Um, and I believe when I am doing this, I'm looking real quick here at the beginning of chapter 17 uh, for the combat system, or perhaps it's going to be the beginning of chapter 16 on what I can spend uh, points on. But I believe I can have task forces in the same sea zone contributing to the same air raid. Yeah, I believe so. 
Yeah, um, uh, we're we're trusting Bravo here in chat to be our uh, real time rules adjudicator. Um, or, or if we haven't have uh, picked up Stuart along the way, happy to have him chime in. So, um, given that we're both uh, non head there, um, well, not in our heads there, uh, I will. Um, uh, yep, page 22. Thanks, Bravo. Uh, I'll go ahead and grab a couple of these. Um, so, I'm going to grab a CAG from Enterprise. I'm going to grab CAG from Saratoga. I'm going to grab CAG from uh, America and Nimitz. Here we go. <laughs> And we'll see what's left after doing this. Now, of course, I'm going to have to escort these guys. I'm concerned you're going to get a chance to... Uh, you've got a lot of aviation left um, sitting there for cap. So... But I don't want to leave my guys completely, you know, naked in their task forces, right? Like, one bad day I'm considering is uh, the bad day where this gets chewed up. And yep. and now, now I don't have F-14s. So, that being... Yeah, again, if you don't take F-14s, you're going to possibly in a hollow world thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to do three. I want to bring three of the F-14s. My, my good detection task force hammer realizes that they're kind of in, a, in, a, in the crosshairs here. So, my insurance policy, if you will, is going to be uh, that they still have some... Tomcats on cap, uh, but the rest of them will come here. All right. You of ready? course, F fourteen to stay resolved this mission and spend them, correct? Yeah, yeah, they will be toast, and so when they cap later, they will be capping yeah. at uh, disadvantage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, which is the other part of it. Okay, so uh, this traces its uh, movement here. Uh, which gets you into um, uh, an interception with the uh, your foxhounds. We could have foxhounds, and I've also got carrier air wing in this zone as well. Um, yeah, and so that'll be a you know an edge case here to look at. Um, the we do have aircraft existing in the same C zone at the same time now. Um, particularly specifically with the ta your task force aviation um, but their mission role like like you only engage a land cap when you're going after that cap right like if you transited the Norwegian sea zone to hit Iceland I don't think Scotland yeah. cap gets to go for you right okay I guess you, yeah so it's basically cap the carrier basically so I think so carrier, and again it. Trusting Bravo here, and I'll skim. I'll skim over the interception procedure real quick. But but you know certainly your Foxhounds yeah. are mission tasked to do that. I think my right does it. Uh, I think I read somewhere, seen somewhere, somewhere that carriers are treated as a, a moving island, so to speak, in terms of potentially. Yeah. Bravo. Okay. So then that would be a fighter versus escorted strike by uh, on on the procedure. Which is the same as fighter versus fighter. Uh, maximum of a 1v1. Okay, so intercepting fighter unit on patrol, less one dice? Correct. What is detected by interceptors? I am not detected. Now, if you roll high enough, this will become detected and your cap will have a much easier job. Oh, yes, 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 yeah, okay. So if I, I, I find this by one hit, isn't it? That's right. So I'll roll one set of Tomcats at full strength. You'll take your one die penalty. And um, if you roll a nat 10, you'll you'll hit a strike aircraft. Otherwise, I'll go against uh, one of the Tomcats. I'll go ahead and let you get your roll first, if you'd like. Oh, sorry. That's a tree rather than four. Tree at plus two? Correct. All right, One, well then. Four, nine, three, six, ten. Modified that. 
Yeah, so uh, you will be modified. You'll at least get one step loss for sure. I'll go ahead and roll mine from my Tomcat as well. Um, and I'm also at plus two. So your nine will be enough to cause a step loss. My seven will also be enough to cause a step loss. But um, against uh, your step loss is against the Tomcat. Yeah, okay. All right. So what step of... It could be one of both step of that formula. Okay, and that I... causes them to be detected. You probably should get like a copper bonus. Right. So now, a striking, um, a, uh, coming in to strike the land targets, the cap will get to go. And so. Um, let me hop into the actual rules here real quick to make sure we're resolving this correctly. The the max 1v1 um, nomenclature is a little confusing for me for fighters, fighters versus escorted airstrike. I'm pretty sure that um, uh, that limits how much I can push, we can push against each other, uh, but I'm not sure. Here we go. Okay. Oh, and of course, we also both get the avoids. Always remember that, right? One of us can bow out if we don't want to do it. Okay, yeah. At, at most, one fighter may roll for each enemy fighter present. Roll their air-to-air -air dice. Modify as follows. So... Um, for my, uh, so, so, you know, I've got this huge, oop, I, for some reason only brought one Tomcat. There we go. So I've got this massive air package. So you can throw as many fighters as you'd like at the problem. Seven. What do I got? Oh, that's, that's. And remember that I am bombing. So what that will mean is that um, your threshold to hit a strike aircraft is actually a nat nine. Yes. I do get a bonus something for action. All right, there we go. Okay, so we resolve it as fighter versus fighter, except that you can bring up all these folks. Natural nine may be allocated against strike units. Any strike unit taking a step loss in combat with fighters on both sides did not receive a saving throw for detection. Uh, any strike aircraft taking a step loss. Okay, so do I, I get a, a, a plus one for the, the for the big thirty one indication or something? Yeah, uh, on each on each unit you get one extra die. Yeah, extra die. Okay, so that's four sixteen die. Um, do they all have the same DRM? Let's see here. Uh, yeah, plus one. Yeah, yeah. So that's twelve from. Um, Oh, uh, Bravo's thinking on a read on rule 17.3, circling back around to whether or not you could throw the yaks. Um, I don't know if you would choose to do that. Those, they're rather impotent fighters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think the yaks, yeah, the yaks are useful for chasing away maritime patrol, but I don't think Yeah, oh, okay. Else. Uh, so yeah, so I see 12 dice printed on your fighters with another four due to this massive thing being detected. So 16 dice, 16 plus dice at plus one. Okay, here we go. I'll start at first five, 15, and... Okay. Um, so you can allocate, um, um, let me check the rule here on 
um, saves. I don't believe that I get the saves um, uh, in the same way that you did. Let me take a look here. Any airstrike unit taking a step loss in combat with fighters on both sides do not receive a saving throw for detection status and all kills are placed before the weapons are launched. Okay. So, uh, how many nines and tens you got there? Uh, uh, hold on. How many natural nines and tens? Two. Okay, so that is two step losses on carrier air groups. Um, and at plus one, what do I have here? Nine? Yeah, uh, threshold to kill me is nine on things. So how many modified nines do you have? Two? Two. Okay, so that'll be two. the other two Tomcats. That's simultaneous, so I'll go ahead and roll my dice, and then I'll, then I'll uh, uh, decrement the, the, the Tomcats. So You're I'm, rolling 11. What was that? 11 dice? Uh, yes, it should just be straight up 11. I, I shouldn't modify any of my dice. So, yep. So, okay, so rolling my 11. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, these are each at plus two, uh, and I'm looking for a nine on each. Uh, one of them has an eight, so I can uh, assign uh, eights and nines. What do we have here? One, two, three, four hits. All right, and all step losses are selected by the rolling player. Fighters must be killed before strike units. You know, that's on fighters versus, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, let me. So, actually, that being said, um, your two step losses you can uh, put as you see fit on my Tomcats, and my four step losses I'll put as I see fit on yours. Yeah, okay. And it can be assigned the loss against an already damaged group, correct? Yeah, I don't recall seeing any restrictions on um, uh, on uh, peanut butter spreading. Any requirements to peanut butter spread? All right, so, and we, um, so actually I'll give you that one choice. Um, you are also assigning the, uh, the air group step losses. And so if you wanted to double up on those, that would be your prerogative. Yeah, sorry, how many was it, two? Yeah, you had two step losses prior that yes. you got to assign to uh, the CAG. You could also assign them to the F-14s if you really wanted to. So the bombing dice is it's one dice per step by aircraft as well. I believe, and I'll get some bonus dice for um, uh, the volume of aircraft here on seed. So I've got two to assign? You, you have two. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right, yeah, bombing resolution. So attacking land targets. Air, uh, th this is bombing, not missiles. Uh, you know, the uh, the NATO side is not carrying cruise missiles off the carriers. So one dice per step. U.S. CAGs get a free seed die per two CAG. So good call on smoking an entire group. <laughs> so... Um, it was tempting to go for those Tomcats to reduce that number, but then you've got to carry groups out there with more Tomcats. Yeah. All right, so I get, um, I have six steps of CAG. Um, I believe you also need to designate when you're bombing uh, airfields with bombers or with fighters, don't you? Um... That's a fair point. I think the very first step we're going to have to resolve here is any seed that I choose to do because you're going to get uh, a, yeah, a crack with Sam's. Um, so let's see here. Air units bombing land targets. Um, so I have, I have a seed die in my hand and six other dice. And I'm, there's no DRM on the seed roll. So I'm just looking at the seed table to figure to figure out um, what what I want this split to be, um, and then and then we're also got to resolve uh, resolve uh, Sam, right? Yes. Okay. So if I do three dice to seed, four dice to bombing, I think. Yeah, I'm willing to take that. Um, three dice to seed, uh, four dice for bombing. That's what I'll do. Okay, so I'll roll my seed, three. Okay, you get one free seed, isn't it? Yeah, uh, by having a pair of CAG. So, um... So uh, five nine nine. So the pair of nines. Interesting. Let's let's dive into the actual rules on this. Um, minus two to the SAM value for each nine and place two hits. I got to figure out if those are like actually hits on a target or what. I think it's on the SAM itself. Or the SAM. Um, All right, let's dive into that real quick. So, here we go. Um, minus two to same value, place two hits. So I, I think effectively, though these hits are used to track permanent reduction in SAM value. So with five, that drops it down to zero. It, it's two, two, um, does it bring it to zero? Well, I got a, a nine, which will decrement it by two, another nine, which will decrement it by two, oh, and. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. So a minimum of one, is it? Oh, is it a minimum of one? No, sorry, I'm not reading that. Okay. So the sum value is three, correct? Yes, correct. Three versus um, aircraft. So based on my read here, um, effectively this isn't seed, this is deed. Those those aircraft uh, completely obliterated the air defenses. Okay. Those hits that get assigned to the sum units then. Yeah, the hits are on the SAM unit, not on any facilities. So the facilities through SAM resolution are unaffected. Yep, but the SAMs um, are, looks like at this point, it's got four hits placed on it. Yeah, got a two pair. Yep. Okay. So um, I'm guessing then, do they, um, I suppose a normal campaign game, which you would move them on your repair? That's a fair question. We can get to that in one second. I want to take a look here real quick. Um, on the uh, Soviet air complexes, now that I'm bombing those real quick. Oh, this is part of collateral damage is uh, for the air complexes. So, mm. 
Oh, I see. So there's there's a special rule here which we may dive into, which is where collateral damage goes in Cola. But for the moment, I'll just resolve the bombing and, and figure out how effective the attack was. Okay. So um, I had six dice from Steps, one free seed die. Uh, I took two of the bombing dice and allocated those to seed, so I've got four bombing dice. Um, and I'm, I'm really trying to go for the airfield at this point. Um, and so rolling the bombing, um, there's a table there. I don't believe that there's any DRM for bombing. Plus one if I have range unused. I have got lots of range. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I used all of my range. So no no dice there. Um, yeah, and... because as you're hitting uh, fighter airfields or bomber airfields, um yeah we can what, what's the uh spe special rule or the discussion on um uh, about uh collateral damage was there any da, 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 da. casualties on either side are irrelevant uh for victory conditions oh for determining victory yeah okay got it so, so this would be bombers. I would be going for bomber airfields. Okay. So four dice uh, of bombing. Uh, the one and the two aren't going to do a lot for me there. The five and the six. Ugh. All right. Well, that was pretty terrible. <laughs> so that's going to result all that work. All that work, and what I do is I get light damage on Cola with two damage points, and you're going to repair it. All right. So. Some damage. damage. A bit. That was a lot of work, though, for not as much as I was hoping for. Let me uh, so check. Yeah. Okay, so let's see here. Collateral damage causes step losses to units at or flying from the airbase under attack. Um, oh, you know what, though? Hold up here. So, bombing, right. And so there's there should be two collateral damage to be assigned. Um, even losses are allocated by the defender, odd by the attacker. So I will get to choose one. First one. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll go ahead and um, hit the. Hmm. Boy, you got a lot of bears. Uh, I'm gonna hit the backfires. Okay, so I got a hit on the backfire, and I'll let you take the hit someplace. Are the maritime patrol aircraft class of bombers for this purpose? Yes, they are. So you can take a step loss from one of your MPs. Yeah. All right. Well, and so now for facility damage. So now that the air bases have light damage... Return to base on patrol interceptors and MP units and mark spent. So your fox hunt. Uh, you know what? No, I take it back. Uh, the, the Well, yes. So in general, the collateral damage was to the bomber bases per that sub rule. Um, 17 to 17 22 1 however um the facilities are the cola air base facilities and so the light damage disrupts i would say the facility complex for as far as facility damage goes um yeah if, if uh Compass ever does a reprint, highly recommend them cross-referencing the play aids to the rule sections. <laughs> that would be huge. 
And uh, Bravo, yes, we resolved collateral. We got um, uh, two hits on bomber bases as far as collateral, but we're, um, uh, the light damage on the airfield complex now should ground and mark spent the foxhounds over the barrens. Is that is that your understanding, Irish? Yes. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, they've not worked there. Yeah. The okay. Has, has to go off, basically. And all of these guys are now spent. Of course, I did that. Okay, let's see, I got white and yellow over here. Okay. Well, that was a interesting use of half of my turn. Mm. So looking here at the op track, that would be four op for me. So yeah. one, two, three, four. Okay, so that pushed us down past the repair um, event. And so repair happens. Now I'm curious, looking at the repair event, if you get to repair the SAM, which would make sense. I mean, I'd, I'd buy that if it's ambiguous. Assuming that's the reason, yeah. It's the yeah. Looking at the cross reference in 6105, facility damage is 6104. Yep. So, I mean, it looks like, it looks like, yes. Um, you know, they're marked with the marker, I think, for a reason. So, let's go with it. Although, I mean, technically, uh, you know, they define facilities as ports, airfields, and combined facilities. I'm reading it as um, above. Each turn, or is this specific for its repair? Oh, sorry. Remove one hit from each damage facility. Whereas facilities are defined in 6.10 as ports, airfields, and combined facilities. There might be an errata on this, of course, right? There's that several, several page errata document. I'm fine either way, to be honest with you. You know, a turn here, it covers two days of work. And while I may have, you know, really blown up a lot of stuff, within two days, the Soviets could have pulled out a new radar or, you know, a couple tells and slowly be working things back. So I'm fine with it, however you want to play it. All right, we'll go. Well, that's the way I read it. It's one, isn't it? Uh, one from each facility, isn't it? Oh, uh, it then is, are the SAMs classed as a facility? No, specifically, um, facilities are enumerated as ports, airfields, and combined facilities, combination ports and airfields. Okay, so I can reduce that two to a one or remove the light damage, correct? That's correct, and you now have a functional airfield again. <laughs> Super. Oh. Probably look at okay, that one of the carrier routes, maybe. This is not looking super for me. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, back on me now. Um, yeah, so I did the four ops and. Um, which now puts. Oh, sorry. Does that ship action happen first? Uh, I think we had already done that ship action. Um, yeah, we had already done that. I was on six and fell down to two. 
Still not the repair action. We just did the. And we just did the repair action. After you complete your op, we'll do the ship's action. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I am going back to try to hit your good task force. I've taken badgers. Now, actually, hold on. How much do I have ops wise? I have three ops, so I could take them. Then it's uh, three badgers. Pick up three badgers. Let me check real quick if the causing that damage on that airfield marked all of the units there are spent or just the ones that were on patrol. Yeah. Um, facility damage, airfield light. No units may fly, return to base fighters on patrol and mark them. So, no, yeah, they they didn't gain a spent marker. They just were disrupted. Okay. They can't, they just basically can't operate. Until, the, until it's brought back online, which you've done. Okay, let's bring out the Badgers. Oh, oh hold on. Oh, two. It's okay. Lovely. Because you took your group closer, not extended range. Okay, so we're going to go one, two. Okay, giving my Phantoms first dibs here. Um, they are. Uh, stretching a little bit so they'll be at one fewer dice against uh, let's see this is against strike yeah there we go okay so this is against strike um, minus one because my units on patrol there should not be any uh, DRMs oh and I will take a brief moment here um, well he's not actually in uh, he just joined us I'll take a brief moment here to uh, welcome the game designer uh, to join us uh, Stuart Tong Stuart thank you for joining us feel free to come off mute and say hi <clears throat> if you're shy of course that's fine too just feel free to yell at me or if you don't have a microphone uh, Hello, so yeah. hi, Dan. Ah, welcome thanks for joining us yeah, thanks for inviting me. I, I can't talk very long because my daughter's in bed next door, but uh, I just started jumping the tailor. No worries. We'll try not to mess up the rules so bad that you feel <laughs> the need to come off mute and yell at us. Okay. That's... Yeah, I'm fun, guys. <laughs> thanks. All right. So um, yeah, the Phantoms are going to take a crack here at, at this force package. Uh, their three dice are decremented to two due to them stretching their legs, and there should be no other modifiers here. Uh, so the Interceptor is rolling two dice with plus one DRM. Wow, really? Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I roll snake eyes with D10s. You just go home. Just. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Um, again, you know, those, those guys are asleep at the wheel. I don't know if this is the, you know, Royal Navy oh. F4s or <laughs> if the RAF has just been lacking, but this is not good. They've done nothing for me. So I'd see him like so, something okay so i have let's see you destroyed one of my tomcats i believe um out did you or do how many tomcats do i have uh, one, uh, yeah so i've got one spent tomcat here i think yep so i got one spent tomcat there I think the Saratoga lost their no the America lost their Tomcats. That, those are the ones that you blew up. Um, so okay, so there's there's those. Um, I've got the Nimitz Tomcats. I'm sorry, the Saratoga Tomcats that are spent, oh. but um, I had deliberately left the Enterprise Tomcats full up. So. Uh, you have three badgers coming in. I've got three cap. Um, ba -ba -ba, that's maritime patrol. Just finding my right uh, set here. Okay, so two of my cap are spent, um, which will uh, decrement them two dice. So that's just a total of four dice from the spent cap. And um, one of my cap is completely fresh. So eight dice against the Badgers. Just skimming over to see if I'm missing. They're not detected, so I get no bonuses there. 
Okay, yep. Wow, those are absolutely terrible rolls. Um, seven of my d dice couldn't beat a five. <laughs> <laughs> so that leaves a single nat 10. Uh, oh, actually, you know what, though? Those, that one and the two will help me uh, yeah. on, on missile kills. Two twos. Uh, yep, two twos and a one. Okay, so the nat 10 uh, causes a step loss before missile launch. Which gives you fifteen. This is just like last time. It gives you fifteen missiles com coming in, right? Oh, sorry, fifteen less your tree. Uh, that should be five. Let me let me check that real quick. Uh, kills this number of missiles, a nat one or a nat two. So the nat two should kill two missiles. The nat one should kill one missile, which will be a total of five missiles from the complements of three wings, uh, tomcats. Okay, so that's, uh... okay. Which um, gives us. Uh... Oh, you know what? Hold up. You got to save on the uh, the cap oh, kill. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead and take your save. It's be six losses. Correct. All right. Yes. Take your step back. I'll give you three more missiles. <laughs> Need them all. Need them all. Yeah, yeah. All so, right. starts at 18. Less the 5 that your F-14 is shooting down. Yep, so that's 13. Um, 13 missiles. I only have 14 um, SAM points on the remaining <laughs> U.S. escorts and task force hammer. So... Um, You'll be fine. Yeah, this... this the... <laughs> Yeah, I was last time, uh, <laughs> but you know the, the the more dice you roll, the more the law of large numbers comes into place, and we just say, yeah, yeah, we're fine. Let's move on. But no, I'll, I'll go ahead and roll it here. So uh, let's see, going over to maritime missile resolution, um, no DRMs again because uh, these are just uh, the black missiles. So uh, fourteen, um, three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right. Um, I'm just counting here. Anything bigger than a three kills a missile. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen for the ten. You have one leaker. Nope, never mind. That was thirteen. I exactly caught them all. <laughs> just got the last one just in time. Yeah. Again. Yeah. So that one, again, the knee and the curve here on saturation, right? Like you were almost at the knee and the curve. Yeah, it worked shot. Uh, so, so far I'm finding, and maybe this is um, doctrinally sound, that uh, you, know, you, you really do uh, want to throw everything at it. You know, metering yourself out, um, you know, uh, it means you're just eating the saturation again, right? Or you needing to overcome that saturation energy again. All right, so that leaves two op to me, which <laughs> at this stage, let me go ahead and put my, uh, oh, actually, no, ships. Uh, we'll go ahead and resolve the ships procedure. Um, yep. To you to move your task force, should you choose? I can only remove. No, we'll leave them right here. Okay. Um, so you're there. My guys aren't going to move either. Uh, detections degrade. Uh, your war stat can uh, take another crack at it. Okay. Three. Okay, may place a poor detection or upgrade placed by task force owner and less upgrading. So you can choose to upgrade. Place by task force owner. Um, it, it says t place by TF owner and less upgrading. Oh, at, least on, okay. at least on the plate. 
So I can upgrade that core back to um, those. Okay. All right, well, Task Force Hammer remains exactly in the crosshairs. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove the spent markers, which will happen here. Let's see here. Yeah, air unit spent marker removal except for MP. Okay. Give these guys their complement back. Oops. About to delete my uh, intruders. That's not a good idea. Okay, so let's see here, and that's my MP. All right, so everybody's freshened up, and um, resolve fighter combat. We don't have any fighter combat to resolve, no detections. Okay, so that should complete the event. Um, you have spent your OP, so it's two unopposed OP to me. Now, that being said, I'm welcome to try and throw two more carrier groups against the COLA. Uh, it's nice that your SAMs are gone, but um, yeah, you still have the entirety of your cap available to go against it. Hmm. So the so the two things I'm thinking here are are do I um, do I do that right do I do I make another crack here because three turns isn't a lot or do I tee up here a little bit of a uh, um, of of a uh, defensive move right um, chasing away the subs or whatever that is I think one thing that I might do um, given that yeah let me do this let me let me start by uh, this might just be a nuisance raid but i'll spend one op to throw um the buccaneers your way what else are they doing <laughs> really um so they will be escort they'll be escort yep say that again irish all right where where your, your forming, yeah, yeah. The Buccaneers are coming out of the Scot, uh, the airfields in Scotland. They have a range of two, um, and so that gets them here, and then they can come to do a strike uh, over um, over the airfields. Because why not? <laughs> So, uh, so that was a one-op play. It was cheap enough, and what else am I going to do with those guys? Um, unless maybe they could start chasing away the task force if you came out uh, of the Barrens. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's just go for it. So... Again, mm. again if I have a carrier in the Barrens, say, can I react with the aircraft? You can't... Well, yeah, so... I, I would assume, I assume a strike aircraft or engage with it. Them. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it's not like um, they're they're completely not there. And you know, it, if I were to move out of this zone, you would explicitly get a crack at it, right? Um, uh, due to you know, how the uh, uh, air responses work, it's when leaving a zone with an enemy carrier, entering, entering a zone with a fighter unit on patrol. Um, so I would say, me, you know, like looking to transition into doing the strike, you know, and, and uh, engaging with that cap would trigger the, the that. So go for it. If, if you if you want the axe to take a crack at him. Why not? I guess I'd use them for something. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you get one uh, die at plus zero. I will get three dice at plus one. Sound yes. good to you? So I'm hoping more as well that even if I fail, I might potentially get detection on the way coming in. Okay, right. Yeah, exactly. I'll let you roll yours. Five. Uh, uh, that's two steps. Two steps. Uh, the eight would be a step, and the ten would be a step, right? Oh, sorry, yours. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Here we go. 
Bye bye, Yax. <laughs> All right, and and they don't, they don't stay around for long. They won't stay cool. Yeah, your your five modified to a six wasn't high enough to result in detection, thankfully. So you may choose two fighter units to respond via cap. Okay. So only watch. <laughs> um, against an escorted strike. Yeah, I think so. Again, me added in another game, but I'm pretty sure it's the highest number of fighters or the highest number of strikers. Oh, okay. You'd have to. It should sound a bit rough and shit. Yeah, that, that does ring a bell, Yeah, I think it's the highest number of either. Or... Yeah. Yeah, well, that ended up being played out right last time since there were four strike and four uh, responders. So I'll stack these vertically again. So, all right, you can yeah, go ahead and send somebody out. You're shopping around for your biggest thing with steps. Just wondering if they want to risk box bats. Up there. Yeah, that plus two is nice, but you know my phantoms are going to get lucky eventually. These these goobers uh, north of Iceland are you know my B team. This is the A team. <laughs> Let's set up the uh, fox spots. Okay. You looking for the foxhounds? Uh, fox bat. Where did the, what's the fox bat shut down? I, I took, um, yes, I took the fox bats and the flogger last time. Right. So I'm going to keep the fox hounds in that case, and I'll send up so many countries. Okay. So, uh, fighter versus fighter procedure then. Um, I don't hmm. see any DRMs or any dice total modifiers um, given uh, what we have here. So it's your dice versus my dice, and if you roll a nat 9 or 10, you're going to get to hit the strike aircraft. Nope. You got to roll first. All right. Wow. Nope. <laughs> Oh, that's a nat nine. Okay. All right. And... Open ears. Yeah, and so um, you know, as per back in there with how escorted strike works against bombers, they're not going to get a chance to uh, to dodge that. I don't get a save against that, uh, given that this was a bombing raid. Um, so that'll be a step loss prior to bombing. All right, so I have a half step or, you know, one step of uh, bombers uh, resolving an attack here. Um, no Sam's left, so that's one die. I don't have to worry about seed and no Sam attack. So, yeah, one die. Um, let me go for... Let me go for the bombers. Still going, for, still going to do collateral on the bombers here. Hey, I'll take a nine. So that's uh, two hits and two collateral. Uh, we each get to pick uh, kind of where some of these bombers go. I'm gonna uh, continue to make backfires, smoking holes in the ground. All right, so that unit's gone. Which, where do you want uh, the next one to go? More of the bears? Oh, that's a painful strike, right? <clears throat> uh, where's that light damage? Bears. All right, and so that now shuts down. We're back to light damage here. Um, Boy, interesting. So, so I feel a lot of pressure off now um, and more freedom, uh, given the um, um, starting to get damage on the airfield, um, where I might actually send a, a lone CAG at this point. Um, I'll escort it, of course, because you can still you can still cap over a damaged airfield, um, albeit at uh, um, at a detriment, I believe. 
Um, no, I get I get a bonus on on save against from a damaged airfield. No, I don't. Capture an airfield. Yeah, we'll 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 have to tease that out. Okay, um, but uh, I still like my chances here with um, with F14. So I'm just going to send the Enterprise. It's it's going to take a, a, a solo mission for my second op here to to repeat. And you guys you guys can go back. Go away. Uh, spent. All right. Okay, uh, so from the final op of the turn, uh, the Enterprise Air Group uh, is uh, again coming for the airfields um, and uh, again targeting the bomber bases. Um, and so now we'll need to resolve the escorted strike procedure for bombing versus a closed airfield. Does that sound like what we're doing here, uh, Irish? Yeah, I can't fly my fighters off that. Like yeah, I think that you're not completely at zero here, though, um, since, you, you know, you can't fly fighters off a carrier either, but they can still cap, um, you know, uh, a little bit. Let me take a look. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, base damage, light, minus one die. Right, you, so you, you found you found the adjustment there? I got the uh, tax by fighter cards. Interception. Okay. Uh, right. It's like damage. It's... So that's in the yeah fighter versus strike uh, in fighters versus fighters, which is escorted strike. So interesting. So if yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely going to escort here, which means that I'm going to be tussling with you. Yeah. So we'll we'll um, certainly allow you to respond here. So. Uh, who who do you want to get going? Help some more make tree trees. All right. Um, all right. So my Tomcats will get four dice at plus two. Um, the escorted strike will get. Um, Exactly as fighter versus fighter combat on an escorted strike, but the non-striking player rolls with fighters, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so I'm actually not seeing a detriment here for the uh, the airfield damage for you. It looks it looks like we're right up in each other's grill, so let's go ahead and play that as written. Um, okay. You are not spent. You are fine. I am not detected. This isn't a damaged carrier. So your, four di your three dice versus my four dice. Okay, and I'm at plus one. Now I'm at plus two. Okay, here we go. Uh, I see a lot of, lot of nothing from you, and I cause a step loss. Okay. Okay, so this is two steps of bombing, uh, which um, well, are all going to be going to the bomber bases. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, two steps of bombing going to the bomber bases. Um, no SAMs, so, and no DRM. A two and an eight. The two won't do anything for me, but the eight will give one more hit and a kill. Um, Even kills are allocated by the defender, odd by the attacker. So, um, I'll go ahead and continue to work on these backfires. And two more damage, which finally puts heavy damage on the cola. I'll, uh, and to you to pick one more uh, unit to damage. Okay. All right, and then, um, so noting here on heavy airfield damage, no units may fly. All cap is reduced to one die per unit per the damage table on page 12. 
Do not remove spent markers on air units when ships move or at the end of turn. The airfield has lost the ability to generate sorties effectively. Spent. Back here. All right, and that will round out the turn, and we will now get into the end turn procedure real quick, just to tidy some things up. So patrol units uh, may return to base, RTB all air if both sides occupy the same zone. Um, I'll go ahead and keep my worthless phantoms up there where they are. I don't have any other patrols out, neither do you. Remove all spent and choose to remove on patrol, noting that your spent do not remove. Okay. Okay, all spent removed. Um, let's see what's next. No invasions, no war tracks. We're not doing first strikes. Uh, weather we would uh, clear off, so let me do that. Remove all weather, remove all spent too. And just checking for weather real quick for what the next turn is going to look like. Uh, clear in the north, clear in, uh, so clear weather. And then finally, um, turn marker and we're on the next turn. Okay, so I think this is maybe a good spot for us um, about two hours in here to kind of talk about what happened this turn and what things look like for us next turn and, and pontificate briefly. Um, so my, my strategy going in here as the NATO player was um, to, fo to work out of one zone um, because I needed to bring as much as I can in one raid to kick down the door. That was what I was trying to do. I was trying to, you know, shock and awe, if you will, right? Kick down the door. Um, that, that would leave a good target, but that was my plan going in. And that seems to have been what I needed. It's kind of like starting to tear something by really doing an aggressive seed at the start. I think now that this makes me able to keep the pressure on the airfields and then hit the naval bases at my convenience. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think you should be great with my air capability going into turn two. It's going to be a massive, massive problem in the bottom. Wave after wave of war um, raids coming in and attacking war facilities and the airfields as well. Um, I thought it was interesting that I don't think we actually, all the action was above surface. I don't think we've seen any subsurface action, did we really? No, but that was really kind of yours to force, right? Since yeah. since that was a threat, you know, I, I needed to, for me, my subs were most useful as escort. Yeah, yeah, because um, at, at, like at one point, I, I, at the start of the, the turn, I had plans and I never got around to do it because there was, it, it, there's always too many things to do, but I was going to try and get those echoes, echo twos out into uh, possibly uh, attempt a uh, anti fire anti ship missiles in the same zone as the, the good task force, but I never got to that point. Yeah, I, I really do love that about this design, um, it, you know, which is one of the cornerstones of good board gaming, right? At every point that you have a decision to make, you have more that you want to do than currency to do it, right? Be it OP or initiative or, or resources or whatever it is, right? And so that, that's always brilliant, truly brilliant here. That being said, I don't think that you're out at this point. I, th I think on the air side... Um, you're almost out, right? You're heavily disadvantaged. You're gonna get a couple of repairs. You know, this is a three turn scenario and you know, you're gonna hit, you know, four more repairs, right? So I, I gotta keep it going. Um, I think which, because well, the two big raids I had against that task force obviously didn't, your defenses held up well, but you know, I could get lucky with another big raid basically and do some damage. Now, if we look back at that, though, and we consider how that could have played where instead of two, we'll call the medium raids of three regiments each, you know, had you had done the massive raid of five or six regiments, right? I, yeah. I You were at my capacity for air defense. Yes. And, yeah, and, could have. It's, it's hard to, like, and even at that stage, it's hard to know, you know, is it right to everything? 
the, the, the other concern was that we, you know, still had another task force there with what, two more carriers. Right. So it's kind of how many, how many bombers do we need, to, how many strike aircraft do we need to keep in reserve just in case. Yeah, and that, that's always been the question about the reserve, right? How much to hold back? If you put everything out there, it's all it's all at risk, um, you know. And, and that gets my earlier decision about holding the F fourteen from the Enterprise back on that one task force, knowing that that uh, I, I might need a little bit of help there. Um, but uh, yeah, my the the feel that I've been getting playing through this is if you're going through a task force that's got a U.S. carrier and uh, an escort or two that, you know, one regiment is is kind of uh, maybe not enough that you would really want two regiments to have a hope of having missile leakers. Um, these I made as kind of supersized task forces, right? Two carriers in each task force and their associated escorts, you know, three or four escorts apiece. Uh, I'm sorry, two or three escorts apiece. And so, you know, really, you know, my calculus for that, I think, would be that, you know, four might be where I would want to have as my baseline uh, number of raid regiments to, to try and push it. And I think we, we saw that, right, because both times uh, I exactly had enough, not not much more, but exactly enough to uh, to absorb the missiles. So in, in real life, uh, the Russians were going to allocate a division for each carry. So for two carriers, you'd allocate six regiments. And they thought that was enough to get a kill. That's what they wanted to do. Which is a bit of a problem because if four carriers turn up, you've not got four divisions with the missile. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's what we thought they needed. It's a huge commitment for four as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. well, uh, having said that, you, you could have got lucky on your strikes. You just, you just, yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that was a good point, I suppose. Like, had it'd be interesting to see, you know, had the because there was two big strikes, there was an earlier one, Stuart, as well, that didn't come off. I think it was, was it 13, 13 missiles as well, uh, Alec. The first one and the second, yeah, yeah. They both, uh, one, one uh, had I think 15 that got necked down, and one had 13 that got necked down. So how different would have how different could have had the scenario turned out had I got lucky on that first raid and then lucky again on the second raid? Right, and I think you can uh, ensure you know quote lucky on the first raid by kicking down the door, right? And the yeah. thing about going after the U.S. carriers is the anti-missile role of the Phoenix missile, given the F-14 escorts, is huge. You know, how, I I necked down a third of the missiles almost in your second raid with that with the Phoenix. The other thing I had considered as well was hitting the air bases in the UK. Yeah. See if that could have I'll say in, of that. in the second scenario, I love hitting the, the UK air bases right off the bat for sure. Um, this scenario, I, I think you get back to what you're talking about with the um, only having so much you can do in an action, right? And do you do, go after the carriers or do you go after the air base? Here, the Nimrods, you want me using the Nimrods because that's just me wasting OP, I think. I think everything I did in ASW was, you know, wasted initiative. Um, my, maybe this was just, you know, bad luck or bad dice, but my Phantoms up uh, north of Iceland were worthless. <laughs> uh, well, uh, of, but it was, I think it was a good move because, uh, again, equally in another situation, they could have um, either, you know, added to detection of the incoming raid or taking out some of those bombers. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's part of the strategy. And, and of course, that was part of the doctrine, right? Like, you know, the, the NATO needed um, the land base uh, fighters and detection and uh, all of that stuff. So um, no, it worked out. It worked out really well. We got to wonder. Uh, um, Bravo is wondering out loud here in the chat. He wonders if Irish could have used um, the Fox shot with good detection to reduce uh, the task force SAM ships. Um, right, yeah, so he's thinking about do you, softening you up, softening me up with the Foxtrots to uh, whittle away the escorts uh, so that there's not as many yeah. SAMs. Again, it was it, it was a choice between subs and bombers and I was just hopeful that the bombers <laughs> would get you. The, uh, the other thing, um, 
when you play, when, if, you, if you're going to like turn it around and try again, your, your mid 31s, your best fighters, probably should be out of intercepting Barrett's C. That means so that it, whenever they fly through, they're going to try shooting stuff. Yeah, so I did. I had them out early on, Stuart, with, um, when uh, Alec moved up. Uh, what did you move in there? F4, F4 Phantoms, was it? Uh, I had started with the Phantoms in place, and you then came out and chased me away. I ran away at that point because you had such an advantage. But uh, it ended up with my gorilla package, right? You know, four carrier air group strike aircraft and three wings of Tomcats that, you know, you you weren't even a speed bump there. Yeah, so I, the, the MiG-31s were out over the Barren Sea initially, and um, they did take, they soaked up some damage on the first, your first raid. And then obviously with the damage to the airfields, then basically had to have to come on. Yeah, no, fair enough. I just, I just thought I'd point out just in case you've not noticed the range. Um, it's it's a bit like you said to be honest. You've got the forces, you know, your subs, they can do the damage. But while you're playing with your subs, you're not chucking your alpha strike in. So yeah, yeah. you'd like to be playing with everything, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said. Yeah, like I said, when we were starting uh, the stream here, you know, these the scenarios one through five, I, I think are really, you know, brilliantly designed little pieces to help program learning, if you will, on focusing rule uh, on certain rule sets and also strategies. And part of the strategy here with all of this is you there's a sharp knee in the curve on missile defenses and uh, integrated air defenses, and you've got to get over it. Uh, and so it, it, it uh, you, you aren't trying to min max early uh you're you're really needing to have a, a violent application of air power and missiles uh and then if you're on top after that uh you've got the momentum yeah you really need to punch through it's just the punch hard and punch through basically to, to get there i'm just looking at the board and something now you know that i consider and that you think about again like kirov never sails out of port you know and potentially you could see a scenario where you could maybe get that into, into the task force with the kinder group, get it into part seven, eight, and potentially attack the task force there. I have to say, I was very worried about um, the Gorshov task force pushing out in, into uh, where I was, because uh, then I would have to deal with the missile threat from your uh your task force i do not have those missiles right and and so if you presented yourself i would now have to deal with you um it's interesting in the scenario though that that um that's something another thing that is something you had to consider because it is too op for you to form those those task forces yeah and i had what i considered at the very start potentially was just chucking everything into that task force pushing it out there and then potentially engaging in North 7A or North 56, and then where I needed to, but uh, again, you're putting you're putting all your eggs in your basket, I suppose, and potentiality there is for um, now. If I will, though, I think there's maybe a little bit of a red herring here uh, on the naval laydown where you had enough surface combatants to think about two task forces. And indeed, you had two subs with, that you could package with them. But those subs aren't, you know, ASW support subs. Those are missile subs, right? Those are Echo 2s. So I'm wondering if you took one of your early plays as getting those Echoes, which are not diesel, right? They can, they can steam together and follow the missile coordination rule set. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I was thinking exactly the same thing was to, to race both of them out and possibly engage a task force. But uh, I just said there, there was other <laughs> other things needed to do. Again, I suppose it's like um, it's like Stuart said. I suppose it's uh, you're either picking um, air or naval in terms of what you're doing. But I suppose on that basis, another scenario I could have potentially done that and attack the task force with those. Um, Echo 2s rather than use bombers. Well, brilliant play, a lot of fun. Um, you know, through this uh, first turn of the scenario, we've got to see a lot of the air rule set, a lot of the rule set related to task force searching. Congratulations on your roar stat being so amazing. Um, <laughs> You know, a lot of uh, attacks on facilities and attacks on on task forces, and um, 
you know, for those of you that are, you know, looking at this game and trying to figure out how to play it, I, you know, really felt that I had a really strong groove playing this game, playing scenarios one, then four, then two A, right? Like, and, and working my way through that, I now feel like I've got a pretty good handle on all of those systems and got them all in kind of bite-sized chunks. Um, I will keep this um, save file as a VSAV and, uh, you know, uh, Irish, I, I, I uh, you know, love a chance uh, next month or so to circle back around and pick up where we left off um, if potentially. Uh, I think you are certainly at a disadvantage here, but um, we've not addressed that naval game and I have to keep up the pressure because, you know, if I have heavy damage on one facility and three hits on the other, you win the scenario. Yeah, you can certainly see, you can see, like it looks, from an airfield perspective at the moment, it looks tough, but you can certainly see options at least. And I think, as you said earlier on, and credit to Stuart, there's a huge amount of options in terms of you know, what you can do. So I think if you replay this 10 times, you can potentially have 10 different variations of outcomes on, on, on your strategy. All right. And with that, I'm going to thank everyone for joining us. Please do, um, you know, head over to Reddit uh, slash r slash Hex Encounter and join Reddit's tabletop wargaming community. We'd love to have you. This has been um, Alec at AlecMG and my uh, friend Irish Shylock at Irish Shylock. Is that correct? At Irish Shylock on Twitter. All right. Well, with that, uh, thank you all for joining. And until next time, good night. Excellent.